Okay, now that you understand the basic operation of how to do a mail merge with letters, it's really easy to do mail merges with others like directories, labels, envelopes. It's all in Microsoft Word. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up what we already saved in our previous training video, the mail merge letters, double click on it. And then this mail merge I did previously says, well, I'm linked to a database. Would you like me to go ahead and pull in that database? Well, of course I would. I don't want to start over and click yes. And it gives me a preview, just one, of the three people in my database, um, the letter here, just to Homer. If I want to continue on, I'll click on the Mailings tab and go to my Start Mail Merge. And the easiest way to do it is the Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard. It gives you, again, that step-by-step -step, uh, process of how to go ahead and complete. When you become more proficient, you'll be able to use these buttons over here in the different groups on the Mailings tab. But for right now, to keep it simple, we'll do the Step-by-Step. So it, it puts me already in step three of six. Now, if I don't want this to be a letter or I want to make some changes, I can always click on the previous link here a couple of times till I'm back to step one and say, you're no longer a letter, you're an email message, and then click next. It's the same basic operation. There'll be some formatting differences here, and that's okay. We can deal with that. It's, it's pretty easy to understand here. First of all, it's going to ask us again, do you want to use the current document? Well, if I do, I could say, fine, I'll delete what I have in here and start over again, dear and then insert my merge fields. Of course, then I can toggle through here. If I don't want to see their names, the preview, I can click on the preview button and just get my merge fields. But you know what? I don't want to do this. I want to click undo a couple of times. I want to go back to my main letter here because I spent all this time creating it. I don't want to do it again. All right, so I'll use the current document, click next. And then where's my recipients? Now, like I said, you can select from your Outlook contacts. If you have Microsoft Outlook, you can select that and click Choose the Contact Folder. You can have more than one contact folder in your personal folders in Microsoft Outlook, and then you can select it and click OK. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay with my existing list here. And then just make sure that you actually have the people you want merging into your letter here, those merge fields, in actually Microsoft Outlook contacts. Of course, if you don't have them, they won't pull. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to keep on going and click Next. I already have my address block over here. I got my greetings, so I can skip all this. And you already know how to do it within that first training video there. And then I can cl click and preview my email message, what it's going to look like. It'll look like this. And I've got a couple of recipients it can go to. There's three of them. I can exclude one, saying just exclude this one. And then go ahead and complete the merge. And then when I'm ready, I can go ahead and click on electronic mail. Once I click on electronic mail, Who's it going to be? Somebody with the first name, Wilberforce, and then whoever else I, I didn't exclude. I only have two. Subject heading would be thank you. Uh, mail formats, HTML, or it could be plain text if you want to use plain text. Um, HTML would be like web pages where you have pretty pictures that you want to send them in the email. We'll keep it as HTML, and then send all records. We'll click OK. First of all, if you don't have this contact in Microsoft Outlook, it's going to say, well, where is Wilberforce? You can click cancel, not send them an email or you can click on New Contact and use your new contacts there, the kind of entry you want. Click OK, it opens up the contact, and you can type in here, Will. And then, of course, come down here and give them an email. And then when I'm done, I can go ahead and click Save and Close. So now, this should have sent off. How do I know? I can click on Windows Logo button, come up here to Microsoft Outlook, and you can see in the Outlook box, I've got two that are being sent out, one to Homer and one to Wilberforce. Homer was already in my contacts. Wilberforce wasn't, so I had to create them. But the moment I create it and save it, there's my mail merge right there. So if I had 10 people listed in my contacts here, and there's two, then obviously when I come to my mail, my out box, and it's starting to send them right now, of course, they're going to come back garbage because they're Floney's email addresses. But in any case, you get the point. For each person you have in your contact list you want to send an email to, it'll create one so you don't have to keep copying and pasting that document into each email. It automatically merged it for us in the emails here. Sent one out, an email to each individual listed in my contact uh, database. Now, if you're like, what is this? Well, if you don't have Outlook, then don't worry about it. So I'll close out of Microsoft Outlook, and I'm done. Okay, now we're really cooking here. I'm going to click Previous uh, several times, go back to Step 1, and we can do Envelopes. Click Next. Same thing. You can change the document layout or start from an existing document, and you can select your envelope options, what size of an envelope that you want to send. Click OK. When I click OK, it's going to say, well, the formatting is going to change, and I click OK, and I lose everything because I'm going from a letter to a small envelope here. So in which case, I want to you know, have my return address. Type in whatever you'd like. 
once I'm done with that, I want to come down in here. Now, somewhere here, there's a blank box. There it is. You just have to kind of guess. So I can go ahead and put in my address block. And Wilberforce Humphreys, it's got his uh, I'm Free Street. That looks good, just like we did before. Except the formatting's changed, hasn't it? Instead of working on a big 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, now it's a small little envelope. So my address blocks, I got my return address. I mean, I'm leaving stuff out, but instead of boring you with this, you understand that that's where your return address goes and then click on next to select the recipients. I'm going to use the same recipients in my mailing list Excel spreadsheet. Click next. Do I want to add an address block? Well, you know what? I already added one, but if I wanted to, I can delete that and click address block again. Click next to preview it, and then I get my recipients here and I can, you know, toggle through them. Wow, that looks just fancy, doesn't it? I only got two. I may have to edit my recipient list here and include Doug. I want to send him a letter too and click OK. All right, so now we got two, three, and four looks great. Let's go ahead and click Next and complete the merge. And if I want to personalize these, I can either go ahead and click Print and save for all of them. And then it opens this up and now I just have to click, you know, OK to print them all. But I'll click Cancel. Or I can select Edit Individual Envelope. And there we go. There's my individual envelopes. And I can click Print here too. I mean, that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to close out. I don't want to save this, but I do have my main mail merge document with my data linked to it. And we can go back click previous several times. You see how easy that is when you're using the mail merge wizard? I mean, you could come up in here and let's say instead of starting over again by choosing emails, envelopes, labels, directory, you can click on mail merge and go right to labels. And then what it's going to do, it's going to change the format. Now what kind of labels do we want to use? Do we want to use Microsoft? Do we want to use Avery? And let's see, I could choose this one, uh, 6090. It kind of gives me some of the details over here, the height, the width. You can click on the Details button and then see that for one label here, that's what it's going to look like. And there's going to be three across and eight labels down. You know, you can change this and make it what you want and customize it, but I'm going to go OK with this 6090 and click OK here. Now, it's going to change the format to my document. It is a document, but it's an envelope document. So I'm going to click OK, and it changed it. Now, how do I know? Well, in this upper left-hand corner, you see that little ear tag? It's basically a table. And you can see when I click and drag here, it's got rows for each table here. There's the first column, second column, and third column. So, these are going to be address labels. I can dump in an address block. First of all, when I do that, it's just like we did before. Do you want the recipient name in this format? Do you want to use the full name? And you can toggle through this to get a preview. Um, if that looks good, just go ahead and click OK. Now, here's the thing. Not only did it give me the option to choose the format of the label, and I added it here, the address block, but then it's got next record. Because the last thing you want to do is if you have a database, and I have three, and if you have a hundred, you don't want to have the same name listed in each uh, label, do you? So by default, it automatically is going to say next record, next record. However, we want to update all the labels. So once we're done with the first address block in the database, it goes to the next record in the database for the address, and then the next record, so it can keep moving on and on and on, and we don't have the same one. Well, do we want to do a preview? We can click next to preview the labels, or we can get a little bit more tricky here. We can start weaning ourselves off of the uh, task pane, and we can just click on preview results up here, can't we? So there you go. I mean, it's right there. Now, what I recommend before you print this off in your labels, as so many people that I've trained get frustrated with, the best thing that you want to do before you print it off is to print it on a piece of paper first. Then hold the, the piece of paper that you printed with these uh, addresses on it against the labels and hold it up to the light to make sure that you have these lined up just right. Because if you look at it here, this may be too far to the left. You may want to click and drag that in so it prints correctly. And then maybe this is just too far up at the top for the header here and drag it down. Because the last thing you want to do is to waste a sheet of labels because they're all skewampish printing all over out of the margins here. So, you know, make your changes. In fact, if this helps, you have no clue where you're clicking. You want to see the borders, like me. You can come up here to the contextual tab, the tab that's relating to the table that you're currently in here, and go to the layout, and then come over here to the table group and click view grid lines. That makes it a little bit easier, doesn't it? So you actually know how much space that you have in here. In fact, you can click in the middle here and maybe you want to do an aligned center. So it's aligning it to the middle and centering it vertically in the cell. So that looks good. In fact, you can click and drag and select. You see how I did that? You can watch the table training video, but when you hover your mouse up at the top, you have to hover it right over the border because if you go too far, either way, you can actually move it up further and then just click and drag. Once you get that black down arrow, it's going to select everything underneath. And then you can go ahead and, in the alignment group, click align center and middle here. So it looks pretty good. If that bothers you, you can always click on view grid lines again to get rid of it. But nonetheless, we're, we're weaning ourselves off of the uh, mail merge.
So we can come back to our mailings tab and we can continue on with this. Click next to preview it. And like I said, you can click uh, recipients. And what it's doing is that if you have more than one recipient, like for example, this page has a three by eight, so up to 24 labels. If you have 50 that you're importing, it'll only show uh, on one page. So you don't want to panic and go, oh my gosh, I only see 24 here. When you click recipient, if there's more than 24, it'll continue and it'll push everybody over, if that makes sense here. So you haven't lost your data, it's just going to give you a preview on one page, whatever it can squeeze on that one page, but you can still toggle through all of them and it will bump them and move them over. Okay. So there's the preview. I can go ahead and click next and complete the merge, or I can come up here and click finish, complete the merge. You see there's no difference here. If I click next to complete it, it gives me the two options, doesn't it? Print or edit. If I come up here and I click finish, it gives me print or edit. Well, of course, it gives me the send emails, but you see, we're no longer tied to that step-by-step -step wizard. We're becoming really uh, efficient by using what's up here, although the wizard is fun, too. So I can go ahead and edit the individual labels and click OK. Opens it up for me. I can come back to my layout tab and view the grid lines. If I'm missing a label, I can go ahead and type it in here. If uh, I've already printed this before and I want to move it down here because this label's already been printed and I don't want the address up there, now I can move it around. So I can use up all the labels that are still unused on my uh, label sheet. In any case, when you're done, you can go ahead and save this. But I'm not going to save this. I'm going to close out and go back to my original uh, merge document. That's linked to my Excel workbook database mailing list. Now, one more thing I want to show you about these labels. If you want to make some changes, like I said, uh, you can use the task pane over here, the wizard, or you can come up here and just use what's on the mailings tab in different groups here. And we can toggle through these, of course. The other thing you want to keep in mind is if you want to make changes here, like let's say you have an address and you want to put something above the address. Well, first of all, I can't tell where I'm at, so I might as well go to my home tab and reveal my codes, okay? And then go to my layout tab and view the grid lines. I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing here in just a second. I'm going to click after here and hit enter. I'm going to add something else, like maybe happy. Any changes that I'm making here, if I want it to update in all the other labels, then I want to come back to my mailing here and I want to check update labels. So I don't have to keep typing in um, happy holidays or copying and pasting in each one. So I want to place emphasis on this. Of course, you're not going to be um, saying happy holidays underneath the address. Don't want to confuse the, the post office here if this is truly an address. But the whole point being is that if you type any text above or you put in any merge fields, just do it in one. Click in the first one. Do it in the first one. Click in it and then click on update so it reflects everything that you have in here. It, it, it copies the merge field and, of course, any text you've typed in. So remember the magic little button, update labels. Okay, we're not done yet because remember in our wizard, we can come down here and click previous. In fact, this is looking kind of messy here. I want to be able to go to my home tab and turn off my codes. And let's go to uh, the layout tab and get rid of the grid lines. I am going to be making changes here. Again, I can use the wizard and click previous. Um, come back to my mailings tab and then make changes in my wizard because we did letters, we did email messages, we did envelopes, labels, the final ones directory. I've already changed this document. I could do a directory, but how about if we do this? I didn't save this, so I'm going to go ahead and close out and not save it and then just come back and start over again, only this time instead of using the wizard, which is again on the mailings tab, start to mail merge step by step wizard where it dumps me in step three and then hitting previous to now do a directory. How about if we just bag it all together? Okay, without the wizard, we're feeling a little bit uh, scared, but don't worry, we can click on the start mail merge button and go down to directory. Then next, to continue without using the wizard, we can go ahead and do everything that we'd normally do in a wizard. A wizard gives us a step-by-step -step layout, but what if there were additional fields we wanted to insert? What if we wanted to edit and change this? What if we didn't want the preview results? We just wanted to be able to see the actual blocks themselves so we know what's merging into it or go back to um, print preview again. What if we want to find a recipient? You can click find. What if we want to edit the recipient list? See, everything that you have in that wizard is just up along here in the uh, on the mailings tab. So it's really up to you which one you feel more comfortable with. For me, I prefer the wizard step by step. But when I'm done, I can click finish and merge and just edit the individual documents for all documents and click OK. Now the directory is just that, like a directory in the phone book. It doesn't take what you have and give it a separate sheet of paper like it would in our mail merge for letters, but actually a directory lists one right after the other. So of course you wouldn't do a letter and do a directory out of your letters unless that's what you want because there's my uh, closing and then there's the beginning of my next letter. But that's what a directory is. It's listing everything together here in a directory just like a phone book.
Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.